this video we are going to talk about materials in Cinema 4D. We are going to start to place the, the first materials. Now I will run a render here. I have already placed some of the materials and in this video in particular we are going to start with basic parameters which will be the reflections and also the refractions and the color, which is the uh, most superficial layer of a material. It's also called the diffuse effect. So while this renders out, I want to show you a little bit of theory. Now, in the previous video, we talked about the three-point lightning theory or system, and we also saw that lights are really important for the scene because also in the materials, we have different effects based on how the material will react to the light. So we can see here the light are emitting photons and they are illuminating the scene. Now when they hit a surface, this surface can react in many ways. Now if the light is going to hit the surface and bounce directly to your eyes in a really concentrated beam, that's going to give you the glossy effect. So glossiness is basically when a material it's um, it will not scatter the light on the surface but it's going to bounce it back to you directly and concentrate. Now when the light instead is going to hit the surface and it's going to scatter all around the surface that's going to be called a diffuse effect of the material and also you can call this the roughness effect if we talk about for example the PBR materials the roughness is the opposite of the glossiness and then you will see many examples on the web now when the light gonna hit the surface and it's gonna pass through the material that's going to be the transparency. So transparency is when the light will go through there. And if you have a colored glass, it's going to bring the color also with it. And also it's going to be deformed a little bit by the IOR, which is the index of refraction. So the light will not go through the object in a straight line, but it's going to change direction and that's because of the IOR, so the index of refraction and of course the refraction effect. Now when the light is going to also be scattered not only on the surface of the object but under the surface, that's going to be called a sub-surface scattering effect. So this is all the way that the light is going to interact with the material and also later on we will come back to this. Now you saw the, the render scene there but then it disappeared. So let's get started with materials. The first panel we can see here is the material manager. This is where you can manage all the materials that you create but also materials that you will find in the scene because you have imported them from outside or also because they were inside a model that you imported. So in the previous video we used this model here and if I want to know what the material this model is, well I have a couple of ways I can do that. First of all I can go, come here in the material manager and click on the select materials of active objects. This is going to show me the active material and it's going to show the material right here on the attributes panel. So you have a panel in the attributes dedicated to material. So all you need to do is select the object and get there. Now another way is to search for the object which is this one here and you can see you have a material tag applied to this object and this is the material again. And also we have textures, you can see here also 
these other spheres that you see, these are materials that we have already applied. Now, since I have imported a scene from SketchUp, I believe that I have uh, imported also all these other materials which were in SketchUp, but then they were automatically converted in Cinema 4D materials. Now, another important thing to know is that if we use uh, another render engine, for example, Corona or V-Ray, then we're gonna have V-Ray or Corona lights and also V-Ray or Corona materials. And these are just two of the many render engine that we can use. And usually we use a particular render engine together with the materials and the lights which are specific for that particular render engine. Well, another interesting thing to know is that even if we have many different software in 3D modeling, 3D rendering, many different render engines, usually we always have the same logic and the same structure for the materials and the same maps. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit of that. And again, this is kind of universal. You can find this structure in all other render engines and also software. So let's take, for example, this wall here, which I have imported. Now, if I click on this picker, I can directly know and go to this material, which is gonna be highlighted here and also it's gonna open up down here. Now, if I double click on the material manager, this is gonna open up the material editor. You can also open the Material Manager and Material Editor going to Window and selecting them from here. You will find them right here. Material Manager, Material Editor. And you can also dock them around if you want inside the interface. But I prefer to leave it like that, just to don't be too, too confusing. Now, a material is basically a container. It's also called a shader. Now, the material will contain many different channels. You can call these channels, you can call these layers, you can call these levels, whatever you want. Now, the bottom line is that these are different effects that are going to be like stacked on top of each other and create a final effect, which will be your uh, final material, or let's call it final node. So you will find many different ways that this is called, but the theory is always the same. Material is the container. Inside the material, you have many channels. Inside the channel, you will usually have a simple color or a simple value, which will go from zero to one or from white to black and all the different colors in between. Or you will have a map, which could be a procedural map or could be a texture. Now the texture, it's an image, so it's composed by pixels. The procedural maps are instead something which will be parametric, similar to the parametric objects, well, similar to the difference between parametric objects and the polygonal objects. So you will not be able to modify textures unless you use like software like Photoshop or things like that, but you will be able to modify an infinite number of times now let's make some examples. This wall here, if I want to change the color, I'm gonna click here and assign a new color. And this is gonna change it right away. I can also see that in real time, in the preview. Well, I can also do an interactive rendering to see the actual render. Okay, and this is a simple value. Now I can also adjust here the brightness and other parameters and values that you will find